Hey there folks. So I just want to make a quick video uh, briefly discussing the different types of Game Boy models, pros and cons of such models, and and so on. Um, if you're a regular of my channel, this is probably periphery information that you've already picked up, or maybe even you've already had. Uh, but for those that are new or you know trying to look to get into the hobby, doing a little bit of research, I think this will be helpful for for those type and uh, for everyone else. Well, sit back, you know, let me ramble for a bit. Maybe maybe we'll learn something together. Um, but before I discuss the Game Boys, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the games and uh, what's going on here. Um, so first off, when it comes to the Game Boy line in general, all of the consoles, not just this original bad boy here, there are two strict generations of console. There are the second gen, which are the Game Boy Advance ones, and then the first gen, which are all of these bad boys. Uh, so the first generation console consists of three different types of games. You have your original gray carts. These guys, um, nice and simple. They should work on just about every single model Game Boy, uh, with some exceptions. Um, but there are some games for the original Game Boy. I can't remember offhand which, uh, but some of them happen to only be compatible with the original Game Boy, and if you try and run them on something newer, they just don't work. Uh, it is my understanding that there is one such original Game Boy game, and it was later re-released as a Game Boy Color game to fix that particular issue. Uh, but there are some other games that have some weird quirks. Um, most of them are first party. But anyway, your first games, your gray carts, uh, these should work on all original Game Boys and most newer consoles as well. You can identify these by primarily the color, but if you look at the label, there will be a uh, game code. Mine, in particular, this is uh, Wizards and Warriors 10 Fortress of Fear. Um, but the game code is DMG-WW-USA. So in this case, the first three digits, DMG, refers to the original Game Boy. Uh, because Nintendo put this DMG prefix on all of their original Game Boy line and all the accessories intended for the original Game Boy line. This is one of those. Uh, this other gray cart I have here is just another one from a different region. Uh, one of the biggest differences, of course, is this one does not have a region code. When they started pumping out games for the US, they started adding the region codes, but the original games were Japanese only or worldwide, and they did not have a region code. Um, this one, I don't know if that means anything specific, 04J, or if that's just randomly generated, unlike Fortress of Fear, which has WW, presumably for Wizards and Warriors. Um, most of the codes are going to be randomly generated and not really associated with the actual game itself. Uh, but I just wanted to give two examples here. You can see the label template is a little bit different on the Japanese games. They don't have these silver bars along the sides. Personally, I think it looks a little bit better, um, but to each their own. Next type of game are these so-called black carts. Now, I have uh, two quote-unquote black carts, for example, and what the black carts are, uh, you can identify them primarily by the black casing, though there are some special exceptions. Uh, the black carts are Game Boy Color games that are designed to work with either the Game Boy Color or the original Game Boy. So we've got two model support here. Um, you can identify these primarily by the color of the casing, though, like I said, there are some examples. Um, one, uh, what, one problem with relying on uh, the casing, obviously these Pokemon games, uh, most of them are considered Game Boy Color games with backwards compatibility, which is a regular black card. Uh, but then, of course, they change the casing. You can identify these types of games by looking at the product code, again, these are prefixed with DMG. Uh, and then there's a 
two to four digit code for the game itself, and then there's going to be a region code. Every Game Boy Color game should have a region code. Some of the original Game Boy games, rather this one, did not. And like I said, these will work on, they should work on just about every single Game Boy. More on that later. And then last of our first generation carts are our Game Boy Color exclusive games. These games do not work on the original Game Boy. Um, the easiest way to tell, of course, is with the casing. These are all transparent housings, uh, and they have this little convex bump where it says Game Boy Color on the plastic instead of Nintendo Game Boy. Uh, additionally, if you look at the product code on the label, you see instead of DMG, we see CGB for Color Game Boy, the four-digit game code, and then the region code. Uh, unlike the previous game iterations, you can see there is no notch in the top right corner. Yeah, top right, I had it backwards. Um, and the purpose of this notch is because the original Game Boy had a lockout in the power switch designed to, uh, I guess, capture the card in there. At some point, Nintendo realized this was kind of silly and they stopped including that, but they kept the notch in all of their carts for backwards compatibility purposes in case you had the original Game Boy. Now, all original Game Boys, this type of model, had that catch, but newer consoles like the Game Boy Pocket did not have such a thing. All right, all, all of these first type games should be compatible with all Game Boys. These type, the Game Boy Color exclusive ones, are only gonna work on Game Boy Colors or newer, and then, our second generation games, the Game Boy Advance games, only work, of course, on Game Boy Advance. Uh, the difference between the Game Boy Advance games and the games before them, obviously, the biggest thing is going to be size. These things are about half the height. Uh, the label design has changed again. There's no real template, aside from having all of the necessary markings for the region. Uh, but they do still have that game code where the first three digits indicate what Game Boy it's meant for, in this case, AGB. Second, four digits are gonna be the game code, and the last three or so are gonna be the region code. And so in this particular case, I have the same game across two regions, and you can see how, how, uh, how different the label designs can be for literally the exact same game. So you can see, same game code, AGB, B24, but this time J, as JPN. So I said this second four digit uh, code here is for the game. Usually it is only three digits for the game and then a fourth digit to indicate the language. And if you look back at some of the older games I have here, of course I grabbed some bad examples. Um, this Japanese game, you see that fourth digit is a J for Japanese. Whereas this English game, that fourth digit is an E, presumably for English. We have the same thing on the Game Boy Advance games. J for Japanese, E for English. Um, just, just a good way to identify these sort of things at a glance. Um, these games, of course, don't even fit in the older consoles. Uh, that it was Nintendo's way of locking out the incompatible hardware. Even if you did get this to physically fit in one of the consoles, and you can get this a little bit further in some of the later models, um, it's not going to work. The code is just entirely different. The cart structure is designed entirely different. The single only similarity they have is they have that same 32-pin edge connector. That's about it. Um, one more difference I want to get into uh, just while we're here. Nintendo designed the lockout for the Game Boy Advance cards such that you just physically cannot insert one of these things in an older Game Boy, uh, but there are more differences at the edge. So if you look at any of the older style game cards, you see it's mostly um, this rectangle shape on the edge here, but the Game Boy Advance cards have these two notches in the corners. And uh, what these notches do is uh, they allow the Game Boy to hit a physical switch, or the game to hit a physical switch on the Game Boy itself. 
Uh, so if I grab here, the Game Boy Advance motherboard, and hold this up, you can see right here on the cart reader there is a physical switch. Uh, that gets actuated, pressed down, whenever you insert a Game Boy Color or older game. But that does not get actuated, thanks to these notches in the cart, when you insert a Game Boy Advance game. That is how the Game Boy tells the difference between a Game Boy Color and a Game Boy Advance game. And uh, the, the switch itself actually physically switches the console from 5 volt mode, which is what these older carts use to 3.3 volt mo mode, which is what these newer carts use. Um, and I suppose one more thing before we move on. Um, I showed with the Game Boy Color games, there were, or for the first generation games, there were multiple different, like, gotchas, you know, almost different style games. You have your gray carts, your black carts, and then your Game Boy Color exclusives. Uh, for Game Boy Advance, you didn't get any of that nonsense. Uh, there are some carts that do come in a different color housing, but that is just something that Nintendo did for fun, I guess. Um, it has no bearing on what type of the game or any compatibility or anything like that. Uh, it's just, just a fun little thing that Nintendo did. So anyway, that's the games. If this doesn't make too much sense because you're not too familiar with the models, um, I don't know, I, I, I guess we'll talk about the models now and then maybe come back and watch this part again. Uh, but otherwise, I do have a wiki page that I maintain with all of this sort of information. Um, the, the whole reason behind this video is I, I just wanna, I don't know, I wanna bring more attention to that wiki because I think it's, I think it's beneficial for the community and quite frankly, it's, it's a big overtaking for an individual um, and I could use some help. Uh, but anyway, oh, one more quick thing before moving on. That was all first-party information. There are, of course, third-party games that are uh, not licensed by Nintendo and do not follow any of the rules that I just covered. Uh, so, you know, they're totally hit and miss. In the case of these specific games, uh, this one I have in my hand, this is a Wisdom Tree game. It is not a bootleg. It is an unlicensed game, but it is not a bootleg. Uh, these are designed to work in the original Game Boy. You notice they are just totally shy. They're a little bit shorter than regular carts, so they come down below that latch entirely. It fits nicely. Everything's good to go. These work great on the original Game Boy. Uh, compatibility gets starts getting a little bit dicey when you start looking at other consoles. Uh, I believe it should work fine in this Game Boy, but I don't know if it actually works in this Game Boy. Uh, and because of these, uh, because of the shape of the cart edge connector, this actually will not work in any Game Boy Advance, because if you try inserting this, it's not going to hit that switch and tell the console to go into 5 volt mode. Um, I did test it. And uh, if you manually trigger the switch with like tweezers or something, it does work, but it's wildly impractical. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on to the models now. So the original Game Boy, and the reason we use um, the acronym DMG to refer to these is because these are literally just a Game Boy. So. Let's, let's take this uh, scenario, for example, as to why we call these DMG and why, uh, you know, we always ask for more specifics. If you say, oh yeah, I have a Game Boy. Um, let's say someone pops into a forum and says, hey, I'm having trouble with my Game Boy. I can't get it to boot games. Okay. What Game Boy? Do you mean one of these? Do you mean one of these? You know, what's going on? Because the troubleshooting steps are different, and this is ostensibly a Game Boy. It's just also something more specific. So in the case of the original Game Boy, we use the model number on the back, which is DMG01, usually just without that 01, uh, to indicate when we are talking about a Game Boy. It just makes things a little bit easier for everyone involved. Yes, it is a Game Boy. Yes, it is the only Game Boy. But that's not how conversations work, you know. I'm, if I'm talking about my Game Boy, you know, I'm not always gonna specify, oh yeah, my Game Boy Color. Just talking about my Game Boy. This is what it is. Anyway, uh, 
This is the original model. This left one uh, was originally launched in 1989, thereabouts. And you could have it in any color you wanted as long as you liked beige with these uh, maroon buttons. Off-white. That was it. <laughs> um, a few years later, almost, not quite, but almost a decade, um, Nintendo looked at this. Uh, I suppose it was closer to six years. Uh, Nintendo looked at this and said, okay, Game Boy's getting pretty long in the tooth. You know, the, the life cycle's getting pretty old. What, what can we do to uh, try and boost our sales? And then they decided, oh yeah, we can make them in color. And so they released the exact same model, but with different housings. I have a black one in particular, uh, but they also came in like yellow, green, transparent, white, and one more color that I'm totally forgetting. Um, decent console, used four AA batteries, uh, and it only played those uh, gray carts and the black carts. These are the only games that you can play on these consoles. These color games won't work. Um, for those that are buying these things to modify, do keep in mind that the later model, these are called the Play It Loud versions, uh, Nintendo did revise their manufacturing tool chain uh, right about when these things launched. Um, it depends on which factory they were built at. But uh, some of the models, uh, one of the revisions that Nintendo made to their uh, manufacturing chain uh, was that instead of packaging the chips, you know, with the, with the lead frame and the plastic casing and whatnot, uh, instead of doing this, they just put the bare die on the board, connected it with gold bond wires, and then covered the whole thing in a blob of epoxy. So if I were to take this thing apart, I don't actually remember which model it is. CPU 8 I think that is one of them. Um, if I were to take this thing apart, you'd see nothing but black blobs where the CPU and the work RAM and the system RAM should be and so on. Uh, that's just because Nintendo was trying to save some money when they manufactured these things. Doesn't mean they're not legit. Um, you can also find the black blobs in this model. They're just significantly more common in this model, just like you can find the traditionally manufactured packages. Uh, you know, CPUs looking like an actual CPU. You can find those in this model too, though they're significantly less common and more likely to show up in this model. Anyway, that's the original Game Boy. I personally, I, I think there's some improvement to be had. Uh, the original screens are kind of garbage, um, and it was a feature at the time. Of course, both of these I have modified, so I can't really, uh, you know, show you what the original screens looked like. All of my original Game Boys have either been modified at this point or don't have working screens. Um, but this is an original screen but backlit, and this is an original screen but out of a completely different model Game Boy. I actually ripped the screen out of a Game Boy Pocket and installed it into this guy. Uh, but one of the things that people didn't quite realize, uh, if you didn't have one of these back in the day, is that these things don't have any internal lighting. So if you were to use this in the dark, you know, this is, this is what the screen looks like when it's on. There'll just be black pixels. There's no lighting, so if I hold it at, at an angle that it's not catching any light in, you're not going to be able to see anything on the screen. That's by design. That's just how these things were made. And, you know, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, well, the Game Gear managed to have a backlight. The Game Gear also managed to have a one-hour battery life and was twice the size while using significantly more batteries because this bad boy had three batteries on each side, not just the four total. Um, so it was a trade-off that Nintendo decided, you know what? Backlights just don't quite work yet, so we'll maybe revisit that in a decade and a half. Uh, <laughs> no, it was it was quicker that they revisited backlights. But anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. So next up, Nintendo, right on the heels of the failure of the Virtual Boy, Nintendo decided, hey, let's refresh the Game Boy model, but we're not going to do too much experimentation because the Virtual Boy just kind of bit us in the ass and, you know, we, we need to recoup some money before we can we can uh, start experimenting again. So they came out with the Game Boy Pocket. The Game Boy Pocket is, quite literally, 
the original Game Boy. Um, most of the parts are interchangeable. One of the biggest differences, however, is that the CPU itself inside the Game Boy Pocket has, I believe it is, uh, the work RAM integrated onto the die itself. So now there are no longer, uh, if you pull one of these apart, you'll see the CPU and one RAM chip instead of two that would be in the original Game Boy. Uh, I forget which specific chip it is, but it doesn't matter. Uh, just know that they are not literally interchangeable, uh, but they are functionally identical. Um, there are enough little differences because it is, you know, it is a different die. They did make some improvements. There are some bugs here and there, but it's all edge case stuff that, um, you know, unless you're like a, a hardware hacker or a developer relying on specific features, you know, it doesn't matter. If you just want to get your Game Boy and play your games, then it just works, you know, it's fine. Um, but Nintendo was looking at the battery technology of the time and going, you know, four double A's really is a lot. Batteries have gotten a lot better. Let's make it smaller and let's just stick two triple A batteries in there. And you know what? In their defense, it does work. It works totally fine. Um, and the original Game Boy Pocket, of course, you know, the battery life kind of sucked. Uh, you came from, what, 20 to 30 hours on this thing to, like, 6 on this? So, yeah, it was a downgrade, but also the screen itself is just a hair bigger. And, like, the, the dimensions of the console, significantly smaller, significantly easier to pocket. And so I guess that's what... Nintendo decided to call it the Pocket because, you know, it was nice and pocketable. Uh, but anyway, just like the original Game Boy, you have your exact same buttons. You have a redesigned link port that's a little bit smaller. Um, and this link port, unlike the original Game Boy one, oh, of course they both have covers, interesting. You know, it's the exact same pinout, it's just physically smaller. Uh, but Nintendo stuck with this design for the rest of the Game Boy model. So, uh, if you have original Game Boys, you'll need a special link port form, but if you have any other Game Boy, you can use basically the same link port. Games played pretty much the exact same. Uh, you had your same face buttons, you had your same controls, power switch, you know, all of this stuff is vaguely in the same area. Uh, the biggest difference, of course, is the orientation of the power, or the volume switch. On the original DMG, you scroll up to make it louder. On this one, you scroll down to make it louder. And for every Game Boy that has a volume wheel, they stuck with this pattern. It's kind of weird. Um, not really that big of a deal because once you get used to it, you know, it's pretty easy to, to deal with. It's At some point, it just becomes the Game Boy itself that's backwards and, and not the later models. Uh, but as I'm playing through this game, you can sort of see how the original screens on these things worked, because this is a totally original console. I have not modified this whatsoever. You can see a lot of the smearing behind some of the artifacts, objects that are moving around on the screen. Uh, that is a result of the god-awful pixel response, oops, of the god-awful pixel response on these things, which Nintendo devs and uh, third-party devs really did take advantage of at some point. Um, oh, I missed. But it means that the fast-paced action games, you know, they, they turn into a blurry mess, and quite frankly, I don't really like it. Uh, but you can also see what the effect of having no internal screen lighting looks like. If I turn my light off, you know, I have to hold this at a, at a specific angle to try and catch, catch the other light just so you can see what's going on. This is, this is what it means to have no internal lighting. Um, it works, and I guess at the time it was nice and cheap, so that's what they went with. Uh, modders have figured out that you can actually just peel off the reflector on the back of the screen and stick your own light panel in there, and it works mostly totally fine. Uh, you do still have the, um, the same problems with the screen with that god-awful pixel response time. My, my screen is unfortunately damaged. Uh, but you can see it does work a little bit better. You can see it if I turn off my light, it should be even more visible because we're not getting that glare. It works, but this was an aftermarket modification. Nintendo didn't 
didn't sell anything like this. Um, much like the original Game Boy, of course, it only works with these gray carts and these black carts. If you try putting one of the Game Boy Color exclusive games in there, it will fit and it will boot, uh, but the game is going to pop up a warning saying, hey, we know you want to play this, but unfortunately this game is not compatible with your hardware. So it's not going to work. And uh, you can do the same thing on the original Game Boy 2, uh, as long as you physically modify that lockout. So you can literally cut that off with flush cutters or just take the switch out entirely. It works the same. Uh, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. And the third-party games, let's see if that works. I'm pretty sure it does. It doesn't work. Interesting. It could just be my Game Boy, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. Let's try one more just to make sure. I know some of these Wisdom Tree games have some problems. Um, most of it due to the fact that these edges are exposed. Uh, makes them a little bit... Makes them retain dirty and contaminants and whatnot a little bit easier. You can see my Game Boy's not even reading this thing. Um, this cart does work, I promise. It's just going to take a little bit to get it working. Um, so maybe it does work, but maybe my specific one does not. I know the King James Bible, this is not Bible, this is Joshua. The King James Bible is only compatible with the original DMG, but these ones should be compatible with other Game Boys too. If this doesn't work, we'll just call it a day. Yeah. It's not working. It should work. Oh, there it goes. I just wasn't being patient. I forgot they did that. Ta-da! It is, by all accounts, an awful game, but I think it's neat. It, there's like a wall of text every time you begin because it has to lay out this absurdly complicated rule set. Uh, you can skip it if you hit the right buttons. Um, the music sucks. The gameplay sucks. Everything about it sucks. But it's neat. So I bought it. Anyway, moving on. Next step. After coming out with the Game Boy Pocket, Nintendo looked at this and realized, you know what? Maybe triple A's aren't for us. Um, and, you know, maybe maybe let's see what happens without this backlit, or with a backlit screen. So they made the Game Boy Light, which is identical to the Game Boy Pocket. If you were to pull these consoles apart, the top half of these two consoles would have the exact same parts in the exact same layout. You could literally take the CPU off this Game Boy, put it in here, and it'll just work. Uh, same thing with the screens, even. The screens are identical with the exception of the Game Boy Light. Instead of having a reflector on the back, it has something called a transflector, which means uh, depending on the, the light source, it is either transparent or reflective. So if there is light coming from the front, it will act as a reflector, much like the original Game Boy. But if there's light coming from the back, it will act transparent and allow a transmission of that light. So what that means is you have a Game Boy Pocket that works as a Game Boy Pocket or with an internal backlight. Now, I, I turn that on and you can barely see the thing. I'll have to turn off all of my lights just to make that visible. Uh, but in a dark room, it does work. Uh, this is an electroluminescent panel that they use for backlights. So if you ever had like an older watch and it had like the Indiglo function, it's the exact same thing. Uh, there is a little bit of a high-pitched sound associated with it. Um, I Personally, it doesn't bother me, but if you, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm old and I don't hear it as well, uh, but if you turn one of these things on and put it up to your ear, you can, you can hear a high-pitched squealing. Uh, but otherwise, these things are completely identical to the original Game Boy Pocket in every way, aside from the fact that they're a little bit taller, they have this extra step in the power switch for the backlight, and they take AA batteries instead of AAA. And of course, makes the battery bump, gives it a little bit of a battery bump, but otherwise, most things are going to be pretty much the same. 
Same sound, same controls, similar everything. These Game Boy lights normally only came in this gold painted shell or a silver painted shell. Uh, very, very recently, an aftermarket popped up for them and now we have third party shells, hence how I have this white one. This was actually a, um, a sample mold, a sample shell that they shot at the factory. So it does have a few defects, but it's neat because uh, this was before they decided to go with all glossy. So I have one of the few matte Game Boy Light shells, uh, whereas the, the newer ones are, are uh, similar finish to this where they're nice and shiny. Whereas this, nice and satin. You can't see that same light reflection. Anyway, plays the exact same games as the Pocket. For all intents and purposes, this is a Pocket. Um, aside from the battery difference, the difference between my modified backlit pocket and this Game Boy Light is extremely minimal. Uh, the EL panel does hit the battery life. Uh, in my experience, it doesn't hit it too hard. Um, but like I said, these things have aged pretty significantly and EL panels do lose brightness with age. So they're all basically shot at this point. Um, unless you're a collector, there's almost no point in getting one of these. Just get a pocket and modify it, or even better, get a Game Boy Color. Uh, anyway, let's move on to exactly that, the Game Boy Color. Uh, this was a, oh, before moving on, I suppose it's worth mentioning, this model was unique to Japan. It did not come out in any other region. So if you want one and you're not in Japan, you're gonna have to buy one from someone who imported it or import one yourself. Uh, it was not very popular, I think, because at almost the exact same time, Nintendo launched the Game Boy Color, which was their first actual major revision to the Game Boy line. Um, it is still considered a regular Game Boy, but with some enhancements. Uh, so one of the things is that the CPU now supports color, uh, but the CPU also supports running at double the speed. Uh, of course, that's not gonna work. Oh, there it goes. Um, I tried to grab all of my unmodified Game Boys for this because I didn't want to show off you know, all these fancy backlit models and blah, blah, blah. But of course, all of my unmodified <laughs> models um, were in the bin for repair and I just happened to never repair them. <laughs> uh, so this one I think has a bad DC jack. But if I pop some batteries in it, it does work fine. But you can see, I boot that up. Still no backlit screen, so a little bit of a downgrade in terms of the light, but it is in full color. And so that is the difference between these black cart games and these gray games. The black cart games should be in full color on a Game Boy Color. Not all of them are, but most are. And Nintendo didn't get too creative. Again, I, I still think this was uh, lingering PTSD from the Virtual Boy failure. Uh, they took basically their same tried and true design. Uh, I think they literally copy pasted most of what they could from the light. They used the exact same buttons even, except for the start and select. Uh, the, the form factor and layout is largely identical. The only real difference can be accounted for the design language that they did switch up a little bit. Instead of sticking with these hard, you know, flat, angular surfaces, they decided to give it a little bit more of an organic shape where it's rounded out a little bit more, um, especially on the back and sides, but on the front even, it's got uh, multiple facets for different angles and whatnot. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Anyway, this is the first Game Boy that can play these Game Boy Color exclusive titles. And like the black carts, these ones should also be in full color. Oh, that was on, oops. Uh, these don't support hot swapping, so you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but anyway, I think you get the idea. A lot of the games are pretty similar. Um, the third-party devs at the time, 
had a choice to either develop games exclusively for the Game Boy Color or develop games with mixed compatibility. And given the absurdly well-selling, yeah, the volume that they moved of these original Game Boys, I think most devs ended up opting for mixed compatibility because they could simply sell more units. And so the number of Game Boy Color exclusive games is actually pretty minimal. Uh, but there are some particularly good ones in there. Uh, one that most people are familiar with, Pokemon Crystal. Um, yeah, it is largely the same as Pokemon Gold and Silver, uh, with a few minor enhancements, but uh, the problem is not Pokemon Crystal specifically. The problem is that if you're into Pokemon ROM hacks, most of them are based off of Crystal, which means they don't work on anything but the Game Boy Color or newer. Um, now, of course, this is a special edition Game Boy Color. They did come in uh, some more normal muted colors, kind of like this Game Boy Pocket here. Uh, in fact, this was actually... They released the Game Boy Color in the exact same color. Uh, but, like I said, most of my unmodified ones are special editions. Um, and this one in particular, I don't think it even works at all. It has some pretty nasty water damage. Yeah. Uh, but I could swap the motherboard out at some point and then repair this motherboard for use in another Game Boy. Uh, but either way, if you want to play original Game Boy games, you know, you don't care about the second generation Game Boy Advance or newer, this is the model to go with. It has by far the most compatibility. Uh, also in the aftermarket, it has significantly more backlight kits and mods uh, than any other Game Boy on the market right now. You know, with multiple vendors making backlight kits and shells, uh, it does it, it does genuinely work out a little bit better. Uh, ooh, that's that's also kind of gross. Um, yeah, that first gen. Game Boy Color, by far, I think, I think, one of the best models to go with. Um, the screen itself, again, there is no internal lighting in the original Game Boy screens, but something about the layer stack up with these things, it is a little bit brighter than previous models, uh, or I guess more reflective. It's a little bit more reflective than previous models, which makes it a lot easier to see if you do not have a modified one. Um, Quite frankly, it's the only Game Boy that I can stand looking at. Oh, that doesn't have batteries in it. Uh, that I can stand looking at uh, without modifying the screen. Uh, the original Game Boy models, you know, these things, there's just too much, too much nastiness going on with the screen that you, you can't compensate for. Whereas the original Game Boy Color screens, they're, they're a little bit easier to work with. Uh, unfortunately, you cannot put a backlight in these things and get decent results. If you want to have a backlit screen in the Game Boy Color, you have to replace the screen entirely, which is why, you know, when you look at this model, you see that extra little bit of screen hanging out around the bottom, because not all of these screens have the exact same uh, dimensions as the original Game Boy Color screens. Uh, so, you know, modders are using whatever they can find, whatever they can make work, and, you know, the end result is pretty darn good. I forgot how loud this thing is. Uh, but, you know, it, it's it's not something you can get out of the box with a Game Boy Color unless you pay someone to do it for you. Uh, but there are some pretty darn neat designs out there. Uh, if you are genuinely interested in a Game Boy Color, highly recommend getting one of the laminated designs. There are two different vendors making them, both Funny Playing and Cloud Game Store. And, um, you know, depending on which one you want, which specific features might depend on which one you want to go with. Um, and I guess while we're at it, quick tangent, I don't recommend mixing and matching backlight kit and shell makers because, like I said, both Cloud Game Store and Funny Playing make laminated uh, backlight kits, which I highly recommend. Uh, but they also make shells, and their shells work with their kits a lot better than mixing and matching. So is what it is. Anyway, let us move on to the second generation Game Boy models. Alright, so if you thought things were good before, 
Here's the second generation. Uh, so with 2001, give or take, um, Nintendo decided to cancel their plans for an upgraded model Game Boy. Uh, they were originally doing... Ah, oh, God, I totally messed that up, didn't I? So Nintendo had originally planned on phasing out the Game Boy, and they were working on something called, I believe it was Project Atlantis. Um, this was intended to replace the Game Boy, however, with the failure of the Virtual Boy, they, they started reconsidering that and then started making incremental improvements to the original Game Boy. That's how we got the pocket, that's how we got the light, that's how we got the color, and then Pokemon comes along, in, uh, I think it was 1998 in the U.S. at least, um, and maybe a year or two earlier in Japan, and really blew up the sales for the Game Boy, and that's when Nintendo canceled their projects entirely and decided, you know what, let's work on the Game Boy a little bit more. <laughs> uh, and, you know, lo and behold, we end up with the Game Boy Advance instead of uh, the significantly more ambitious and significantly more powerful Project Atlantis. Um, I think they did a pretty darn good job. But anyway, it is this model that uses the second gen games. You see they sit nice and flush. And of course, much like my other models, this thing could use a little bit of work. Uh, but you pop two batteries in there, you put your game in there, and then you can play it. You notice the screen is a little bit bigger once again. Uh, it's not quite widescreen. The original was something... It was mostly square. I forget the specific aspect ratio. It's something like 10, 10 by 11. Uh, whereas the Game Boy Advance is a little bit wider at a 3 by 2 aspect ratio, uh, which is halfway between 4 by 3 and 16 by 9. Um, but... I don't know, it works out pretty nicely. Uh, one of the biggest problems and criticisms at the time, as you might be able to tell from how I'm struggling trying to capture this, uh, is that the screen is not as reflective as the Game Boy Color, and, such, and as such it's kind of dark. <laughs> um, it's not a very pleasant experience. Most people report that this Game Boy is one of their favorite models because ergonomically it's the most comfortable option for them, and I don't necessarily agree, but that's how ergonomics are. You know, they vary from person to person, and I'm certainly not gonna, you know, dismiss it just because I don't agree with their ergonomics. Uh, but anyway, Games were uh, much more improved. Every single game at this point is going to be in full color, unless there are some particularly artsy ones out there that chose a stylistic choice of not being in full color. I can't even hold this at an angle to capture that. Um, my lighting hasn't changed from the previous models, so just just as a reference, I guess, uh, that that's how unseeable these things are. Uh, of course, they didn't age too well, um, Exposure to oxygen and UV does degrade the screens, does make them a little bit harder to see. You can fix that by peeling up and replacing the polarizers, but it's usually a lot of work and not worth the effort. Uh, but anyway, yeah, games had much improved sound, much improved graphics. Uh, they had the power of the GBA CPU, which is laughably weak in modern standards, but compared to the original Game Boy and Game Boy Color is leaps and bounds ahead. Uh, but, on top of that, they also added compatibility for all of the original games. Of course, the biggest downside, as it might be, is that because the new games are half the height, the old games stick out. I mean, it's a little, little itty bitty thing, um, not too big of a deal in my opinion, but I know it does bother some people, and quite frankly, I wouldn't choose a Game Boy Advance if I was playing original Game Boy games. But I'm also the type of person who owns hundreds of Game Boys. Um, if you're the type of person who just wants one Game Boy and you're primarily going to be playing these full-size carts, then obviously the older models make a little bit more sense. But if you want to mix and match, because there are 
quite a few excellent games out there on the Game Boy Advance, um, then maybe a Game Boy Advance makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but Nintendo did mix up the design a little bit compared to their older Game Boys because now we have two shoulder buttons. Uh, but otherwise, things are pretty much the same as they were. You've still got a power switch, still got a headphone jack, still got volume wheel. Um, your two face buttons, start and select, and then your D-pad. Pretty much the same as it was. Um, battery life even is about the same on this console. Uh, I think... I think it worked out to a Game Boy Color can run a Game Boy Color game longer than a Game Boy Advance can run a Game Boy Color game, but negligibly so. Um, just consistently enough that it showed in my testing. Uh, I don't know what Nintendo said about the battery life, but I expect them to give the same ballpark estimate uh, because these two consoles do use approximately the same amount of power, uh, but each game is going to be a little bit different. But anyway. Fun fact over. Um, this was, and I think still is, one of the most popular Game Boys. So the original Game Boy, the DMG, you know, it sold well enough to kickstart this whole model line. But I think this one is still the most common one just because of the sheer versatility of it. Uh, but also, I don't know, I guess a lot of people really vibe with this curved back and you know, fits really well in their hands. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about some of the other models being too cramped. Um, in my opinion, I think they're holding them wrong, but also it's worth keeping in mind that these were designed for children's hands. My hands are a lot larger than a, chil than a child's hands because I'm an adult. That's, that's how this works. We, we grow as we age. Um, so it, I don't know. It, it's hit and miss depending on the model. Um, I don't have any real bad things to say about this. It works with all of the games on the in the field of view right now. Um, these Game Boy Color ones, these these all behave same as if they were inserted into a Game Boy Color. So uh, some things that I didn't really get into, like the Game Boy Color has a feature to enable color palettes on some of these older games. You can do the exact same thing on the Game Boy Advance. Um, the newer games like the Game Boy Color Exclusive and the Black Carts, you can't do the color palette thing on, but you can't do it on the original Game Boy Color either, so, you know, kind of balances out. Um, all in all, relatively, you know, pretty good console. If you're looking for one single model that does it all, this is probably the one you want. But there is also the Game Boy Advance SP, which came out... Uh, I think this was 2001, so the Game Boy Advance SP came out two years later in 2003, and it is a revision to this console. Functionally, it is identical, except that it happened to ha have a few um, mods, as it were, built in. So unlike the original Game Boy, this thing includes a light built into the console to illuminate the screen so you can use it in darkness. And of course, I neglected to put a battery in it because of who I am as a person. Uh, so let me let me pause and do that real quick. All right, just a battery I had laying around in my parts bin. Uh, but it's worth noting that the Game Boy Advance SP is the first console that does not use AA or AAA alkaline batteries. It uses a rechargeable battery out of the box. Um, this was certainly popular back in the day because it meant you know, no longer you were stealing the double A's out of the TV remote every time you needed batteries. Uh, but personally, I loved it because I could just charge it whenever and I never had to have that, like, you know, alkaline anxiety where, yes, I have a few hours on the batteries, but I don't necessarily want to carry them with me. And, you know, I'm going to be going camping for the weekend. You know, do I want to replace them? Do I want to bring extras? Blah, blah, blah. You know how it is. The, the things that... Uh, 10 year olds worry about uh, but anyway you plug it in with one of these bad boys to uh, charge maybe is this thing even plugged in it was oh it's just a uh, just an old console unfortunately age gets to all of us and you can see uh, I had to fight that to get that to charge but 
pretty easy. Most consoles are a little bit more um, lenient when it comes to charging, but let's take a look at that screen light. So this Game Boy does add one extra button to the face. All of the entire purpose behind this button is to turn this light on and off. It does nothing in game. Uh, the, the silicon, the CPU in this thing, it's identical to the original Game Boy Advance. It's a slightly different package, so you can't like literally, you know, swap them back and forth, but functionally it's identical. It does the exact same thing. Uh, any, any bugs that exist in any games with any specific CPU variants, you know, aren't necessarily fixed in here, you know, it might, it might exist, so on and so forth. Um, all, all that to say, it's literally the exact same console, you'll get the exact same experience, except that it has a light. So if I turn off all of my lighting, you can see this thing perfectly fine. I'll turn that on, you can't see that thing worth a damn at all. And so, that's the light. Uh, I think they also made some improvements to the LCD itself because it is a little bit easier to see. Uh, because with that light off, I can I, I can still, you know, see this one a little bit. Um, I don't know, they both kind of suck. Light on. Um, but one of the best benefits of how this light works is that you can use the console out in direct sunlight or, you know, in a completely pitch black room and it's perfectly visible in every scenario. It doesn't look the best because it's a front light and there's, you know, bias towards the bottom because that's where the LEDs are. Um, but it works, and I think that's the important part. So this specific console is what I actually recommend to most people. Uh, you know, I was saying this one's a pretty good one, and it is. Most people tend to like it a little bit more because of the ergonomics, but functionality-wise, this is the best model. Um, it already has a rechargeable battery, something that a lot of people seem to think they need to mod into their Game Boy. Um, it already has a screen with internal lighting, something that a lot of people are modding into their Game Boys. It already has full compatibility with these half-height games and the older Game Boy Color games. Everything just works. Uh, and quite frankly, when folded up, it's still smaller, even with that game sticking out, than uh, Game Boy Advance with, without a game sticking out. You know, um, it is the most pocketable console. I think uh, I personally really like the the buttons. I think they're really comfortable. I don't think it's too cramped at all. Um, this is one of the first Game Boy models with clicky tactile buttons instead of the soft squishy membranes, uh, which is why they might look a little bit smaller. The travel is not nearly as significant, uh, but. That's because they're clicky. Um, audio, again, it's going to be pretty similar to the Game Boy Advance, um, but you also have to keep in mind that this is still a children's toy, and you know, audio is never a priority for these things. So it still sucks, but it's just as good as the Game Boy Advance. Uh, unfortunately, if you're buying one of these things in in current year, which as of the time of filming is 2022, you know, you got to keep in mind that these lithium batteries are 15 years old at this point. You know, most of them are pretty tired. You got to look to the aftermarket to get some decent runtime out of these things. Uh, but personally, I think it's my favorite model. And if you're, if you're looking, if you're the type who wants to buy a Game Boy to play physical, actual games, and you want to play a lot of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Color and original Game Boy, this, this model is unbeatable in terms of compatibility. Uh, the single only downside, in my opinion, of the Game Boy Advance SP over the original Game Boy Advance. If we look at the cart orientation, you notice the carts go in the top on the Game Boy Advance, whereas they go into the bottom of the SP. That means there are two games that are incompatible, uh, two Game Boy Color games that have um, motion sensors in them don't work because they're expecting the cart in this orientation, not this one. There are some Game Boy Advance games that also have motion sensors, but they're smart enough to account for which model, and they ask you, you know, which one you play it on, 
so that it orients the inputs properly, but Game Boy Color doesn't have that, so you can't play Kirby's Tilt and Tumble or Command Master. But beyond that, everything else I think is pretty darn solid. Um, just It just works. There's some new accessories for these things, like you can get the, the wireless link adapters. Of course, they only work with a handful of games, but, you know, neat additional functionality. Um, otherwise, these two, hardware-wise, are largely identical. One's just significantly smaller and with, with some improvements. Uh, the hinge itself might be a little bit annoying in terms of, like, reshelling these things, uh, but they're pretty solid on these consoles. I haven't had any experience uh, with these things wearing out. Uh, unfortunately, there are some late model Game Boy Advance SPs, very late model, very late in the production runs, uh, that had been built with um, defective plastics that over time has just gotten so brittle that if you just look at the thing funny, it'll shatter. Unfortunately, that exact same issue also impacted pretty much every single model DS they made, and quite a few Game Boy Micros that they made as well. Um, again, it's only the late model SPs, so if you import a Pearl Blue from Japan, which is going to be an AGS-001, that's probably not affected, but if you get a AGS-101 from the US that is a Pearl Blue, that is highly likely to be affected because that is a late model SP. Uh, but anyway, this was the 2003 model SP. One year later, Nintendo decided to launch the slightly improved 2004 model SP, which, case aside, is almost identical to the original model. Uh, the biggest difference is, of course, the screen. So this on the right, eh, on the left, the original model is the AGS 001. This is the one that came out first. It has the front lit screen that is viewable in all lighting conditions, um, nice and easy on the eyes, works really darn well. Uh, my personal favorite model. Um, but then, the year later, they came out with a revision to the revised model, and uh, this one Sorry, for context, this is totally stock. This is how they came from the factory, uh, you know, button colors and everything. This one is modified. This casing is an amalgam of several different models with custom buttons. Just wanted to get that out of the way. But the screen itself is totally stock. That's how they were designed. Uh, so if I put these side by side, kill my lights again, you can probably see the big difference between the two. Uh, the newer model, is backlit instead of the older model's front light, which means in the lighting situations that it works well in, it's going to look a lot better in most games. There are some, some, very small number of exceptions. Um, but the problem is this is a backlight, which means you take this out into direct sunlight, you know, the screen's gonna get totally washed out and you won't be able to see anything. Whereas this is a front light. This screen has a reflector. You take it out into the direct sunlight, it's going to look incredible because it's getting all of that light bouncing off the screen and reflecting it back into your eyes. It looks good. That's how they're designed to work. It works well. This one, on the other hand, was a little bit more popular because most people tend to not use these things out in direct sunlight or in a pitch black room. So, you know, in a moderately lit home or office or something, it does look better. Uh, you have two brightness options, low and high. Um, they're both a little bit low in terms of uh, what we can do with modern screens, but it does work. It's totally good. This is um, widely considered by the aftermarket to be the most desirable model. I disagree. Uh, I think that it is basically a collector's item at this point, and there's almost no point in getting one. Uh, if you are the type to say, oh, well, it's an original Nintendo screen, it's authentic, uh, it is the most accurate representation you can get of these original games, well, you're wrong, because most of the games were designed for this screen, or for this screen, or... I already put the Game Boy Colors away. No, I didn't. They're right here, you know, or for these screens, all of which 
didn't have any internal lighting. Um, so arguably, this one is the most accurate on the Game Boys. Um, and not to mention, this model is like half the price. Uh, in terms of modifying these consoles, like if you want to put a put an aftermarket kit in them, get you know your nice backlight. Oh, I don't have one handy. I think this one works. Feels like it has a battery in it. There it goes. If you wanted to modify your Game Boy and put a uh, aftermarket screen kit in there, you know, these two models are the exact same as far as uh, compatibility with backlight kits. So if you're going to modify it anyway, just get the cheaper one to start with. You're, you're taking that screen out. Uh, but in my personal opinion, the aftermarket screen kits do perform better than these original screens anyway, especially when you look at brightness. This one on the left here is quite a bit brighter. The viewing angles are going to be a little bit better. Oh my god. This is... Oh my god, I can't believe I've just done this. I was looking at that. I was wondering why it only had two brightness levels. And then as soon as I hold it at an angle, I noticed... That's an AGS 101 too. Let me get a let me get a modded Game Boy. <laughs> All right. In my defense, I had two red Game Boys on my desk. I grabbed the wrong red one. Um, doesn't, doesn't have a battery in it. But that's okay. I'll put a battery in it. That thing is a junk four parts console keeps coming back to bite me in the butt. Anyway, there we go. That, now they look different. Okay, so this isn't the best example for um, backlight performance. I don't think this is my favorite kit. I much prefer the kit that we ended up putting in the slate models. I think that looks a little bit better, uh, but I don't have an SP handy with that kit on it, and I wanna stick with SPs for the time being. Um, but you notice we have more backlight steps. This particular kit has five. Uh, I don't think this one has, oh, it does have a touch sensor too, so you don't have to use the button because the button requires soldering. I don't remember where the touch sensor is. I think it's right there. Um, all in all, pretty nice. You get a much brighter screen out of these things. Um, the scaling on it, because these don't have the exact same resolution, they're actually higher resolution, looks a little bit better. I don't know. My personal opinion is, if you want a Game Boy and you want to mod it, SP. Anyway, that's enough of that. Um, unfortunately, Nintendo decided to do the thing they do with almost all of their limited editions, and because the SP was basically considered a limited edition advance, uh, they decided to paint it, and then they rolled rolled with it, and then just continued making the SPs, um, because they were good Game Boys. But that means, unfortunately, they've all aged pretty, pretty darn awful. Um, all of them are, you know, if, if it's been handled at any point, they're going to have these worn out corners. Uh, the bottoms especially are pretty bad. It, it is what it is. Um, thankfully, the aftermarket has come along and said, hey, we're going to start making shells in, uh, in transparent colors. Unfortunately, these are kind of not so great either. Um, but here's a teaser. I've got some new stuff coming out very soon that might be a little bit better. I'm going to check this out later and, uh, well, stay tuned for that, I guess. Um, but anyway, long story, long ramble, try and get back to this. <laughs> you can, th there's lots of different models, uh, there's lots of different nuances, uh, I have all of this written up in the wiki that I maintain that will be linked in the description. Um, I just wanted to try and give a brief overview, I know we're already an hour into this, and this is all basic surface level stuff, or stuff that I consider basic surface level stuff. Uh, there's a lot that I glossed over, including the fact that 
this game is blue for a specific reason, whereas the normal color for Game Boy Color games is this smoke gray. Um, the reason for that is this supports the Japanese only uh, mobile broadband adapter, which, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's its whole thing in and of itself. Um, but the Japanese Pokemon Crystal game also supports that, and that one doesn't use a special, co well, I guess it does use a special color case, but it's not that same blue, it's different blue. Uh, but anyway, I, I guess that's that. That's kind of all I wanted to talk about on Game Boys. Um, I think I briefly mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but like I said, if you're familiar with this sort of stuff, you know, you already know this, then this isn't going to be news to you. But if you're trying to get into this hobby, you know, you see your favorite content creator or whatever, you know, making a Game Boy, and you you want to get into that too because you think they're having a lot of fun and you want to cash in on that fun too, then, you know, this is the best model, I think. Start here, you know, decide what you like, what you don't like, and move on. Uh, unfortunately, this is the most expensive model at this point. Well, not counting... Not counting the 101s um, and some of the like special edition or you know more rare editions. Hmm. I guess it's not the most expensive model. <laughs> it is pretty pricey though. Uh, unfortunately, they have gone up a lot quicker than some of the other models. Um, not the most expensive, but it is what it is. Uh, I suppose I should briefly discuss the Game Boy Micro uh, while we're here. Uh, this is one of the OEM faceplates that they came with. I don't know what Nintendo was doing, but they were trying to get w real weird with it. Uh, but the Game Boy Micro had these replaceable faceplates. Um, there's a little tool you're supposed to remove to pop those latches, but this faceplate is like really worn out and just falls out anyway. Uh, but you know, you can just pop different faceplates on it. Uh, unfortunately, the aftermarket form basically non-existent. Um, so you're kind of shit out of luck. If you want one of these, they're very neat consoles, but they're Nyon Collector's Editions at this point. They are functionally very similar to a Game Boy Advance. Uh, they're even basically the same form factor, except a fraction the size. The biggest thing, though, is this is not a Game Boy Advance Micro. This is a Game Boy Micro. Not a Game Boy Advance Micro. Game Boy Advance consoles can run original Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. The Game Boy Micro, you cannot run these games on them. The cart slot is even keyed, so you can't even insert these. It just, it doesn't work, it's not going to work, you're not going to have a good time. But, if you take a Game Boy Advance game, pop it in there, it's going to work totally just fine. These things are designed to play Game Boy Advance, second generation Game Boy games, only. But, as long as that's all you want to play, they do work pretty darn well, and like the SP, they already have a backlit screen, they already have a rechargeable battery, uh, they already have a lot of the mods that most people would be considering putting in their Game Boy, so if all you want to play is Game Boy Advance games, and you're not concerned that this size is gonna be off-putting, then, you know, go for it. As far as the size goes, if you have a Nintendo Switch, you're probably already familiar with the, the form factor. Um, it's basically the size of a Joy-Con. In fact, it is the exact same height as a Joy-Con. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit wider, but, um, you know, if you're fine playing on this, you'll be fine playing on this, too. Uh, these, I believe, are the most expensive model now. And like I said, they're basically collector's items at this point. They're, if you want to actually play games, this thing's a little bit better. Um, but they're, they're pretty neat to have. Unlike the other model Game Boys, this thing has a full aluminum skin on it. Uh, it has the replaceable face plates, um, you know, really cool stuff. It has an incredibly small battery, yet it still gets phenomenal battery life. Uh, I think these things can outlast an SP on a good day. Um, no, they're, they're, they're just pretty good. Uh, but in terms of handhelds that play the carts, 
pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure we covered all the uh, actual models. There are a few additional models, like the Super Game Boy for the Super Nintendo, that will play only the black and gray carts, but it allows you to play um, Game Boy games on the big screen through your Super Nintendo. Uh, there's also the Game Boy Player for the Game Boy Advance. I mean, for the uh, Game Bo for the Game Cube. Good lord. Uh, that'll play every game that you see on my desk here. Uh, it's basically just a Game Boy Advance, but tethered to a GameCube. Uh, the unfortunate downside is that GameCube controllers suck for Game Boy games, and the aftermarket does not have your back there. Uh, there is like one controller that's any, you know, that's that's reasonably good, and it's rare and it's expensive. And there's an aftermarket clone of it that is not expensive but is still rare. Um, I guess because it's just not very desirable. I don't know. Either way, this is what it is. Uh, there are also a few oddball models like the Visti on Dockable Entertainment. That thing is actually a Game Boy Micro, uh, but inside of a portable DVD player. Um, and I think that's about it. There are a few other oddballs, uh, like the Nintendo DS and the DS Lite both have compatibility with Game Boy Advance games, but will not play any original Game Boy games. Uh, like the Game Boy Micro, they are keyed and just simply will not work. But if you pop a original Game Boy Advance game in there, um, we can boot it into Game Boy mode, and you see the one of the screens turns off, and then the Game Boy game just plays as normal on the other remaining screen. Uh, these are these are pretty decent. The form factor is about the same as a Game Boy Advance, uh, except that you have that whole additional top screen. Um, the Game Boy experience on these things is pretty minimal because these aren't intended to play Game Boy games. These are intended to play uh, Nintendo DS games, or there's a flash cart in here. Uh, so you got the two screens, um, but these technically aren't Game Boys, so they don't really belong here. So. That being said, I guess let's go ahead and sum up some of the things that I've talked about, and here comes the recommendations portion of my video. If you want a Game Boy and you want to build a collection of original games to play, the AGS-001, this model right here, is I think the perfect starter model because it has the best balance of functionality, compatibility, uh, and uh, and, and support, aftermarket support. Um, if you get this thing, decide you hate it, the ergonomics suck, whatever, maybe try one of these bad boys, the original Game Boy Advance, the AGB-001. Um, and if you hate that too, then you're probably going to hate every single thing coming your way, uh, but it's probably worth trying one of the original Game Boys. You know, maybe, maybe you have bigger hands and that's just a little bit more comfortable for you. Uh, if you have zero interest in the games themselves, uh, like, you know, maybe you want to play these, but you don't care to collect the carts because uh, collectors, um, hoarders, have caught on the value, and some of these things are going for absurd prices, like Leaf Green, I think it's something like 80 bucks right now, uh, which I think is personally, personally I think is absurd for this game, it's not that good of a game. Um, also, there are millions of them, so why? Anyway, uh, if you don't care to collect the specific carts, there are, of course, flash carts you can get, and then, you know, getting the ROMs is a little bit, you know, that you're, you're on your own for that. It's just because they're not sold anymore and you can't get them legitimately does not make it legal. Um, but at that point, you could always go with something like this, you know, just grab yourself an emulator console, load up your ROMs on this, and then play your games. This will work totally fine. Uh, emulation these days is... It's perfectly fine, right? Uh, like, yeah, sure, there are some quirks, I'm sure, with some... Ah, excuse me. I'm sure there are some quirks with some specific games, but by and large, everything is just, just going to work from the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance era. Like, there's... These aren't powerful systems, emulation is very easy on them, and the experience is genuinely good. This console, this Miu Mini, these things run for like 50 bucks, 
which is cheaper than a single copy of the game I can play on it. Uh, let alone, it already has a beautiful backlit screen, rechargeable battery with a USB-C port, you know, a headphone jack, a nice loudspeaker that is much higher quality than anything you'll find on an original Game Boy. Though it does get a little distorted if you crank it up. Uh, but you don't have to crank it up. But look at this. It just it just works. There's not a single problem with any of this stuff. Um, I totally forgot. Oh, there we go. And you have stuff built in that you wouldn't have on an original Game Boy, like save states. Uh, you can control uh, uh, shaders and such, and it's just overall a better experience if all you want is literally to play the games. Uh, sure, there's emulators on your phone, but not having dedicated buttons sucks. It just does. And last but not least, I feel it is worth the honorable mention, the analog pocket. Whoop. The analog pocket. <laughs> it's big, it's pricey, it's hard to get, but when you consider the retail price of these things and what you get for what you pay, uh, if you want a, a console that will play your physical carts, and you can get one of these, this is one of the best options available. Uh, it has by far the best looking screen out of anything I have shown ever in any of my videos. It really does. It is just that good of a screen. It looks incredible. Uh, not to mention the cart slot means you can actually play it with your physical games and it just works. These, um, as they like to say, it's not emulation, uh, but really it is hardware emulation, but it's still running the game the same way an original Game Boy would run it with some minor exceptions. Now, of course, this was programmed by someone uh, who reverse engineered the original CPU design. So this can only run games as good as that reverse engineering was. And in my opinion, it was very, very good because I haven't encountered a single bug uh, with any of this stuff. Um, not to mention there's been some pretty regular updates my specific, that was dumb, my specific console isn't updated, but only because of who I am as a person. Uh, you can play original Game Boy games all the way up to Game Boy Advance. It just works. It's great. If you can get one of these, and if you wanted, you know, like a Game Boy Advance or something, and you were planning on modifying it, this is by far the best bang for buck. The only problem is you can't really get these because they sell out almost instantly and then get scalped on eBay, but if you can get one, it's it's the best game. I guess I never got my running shoes. That was silly of me, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it, it just, just works with all the games, and you've got your, your silly little screen LUTs so you can display it in a, in a manner that would be most similar to how the original hardware would look. I don't want to say most accurate because it's technically not accurate at all, but, you know, on account of it being a backlit screen, but the experience is certainly a lot better than uh, something that would be more accurate, so I'll, get, I'll give them points for that. Uh, but it is just genuinely one of the best Game Boy experiences. Now, if you're looking at this thing and you're looking at the new firmware going, oh yeah, I can just load up my cores and then put ROMs on the SD card. And it's like, well, yeah, you can do that. But why are you going to spend, you know, $250 after shipping and wait in line for almost a year just to get one of these when you can get one of these now that already does that off your micro SD card? and just works, you know, the support's already there. In my opinion, if you're not getting this to use with the cart, you know, to use with original games, then you're wasting your money. It is what it is. And I genuinely mean that. If you're looking at this going, oh, well, I'll just use it with my Easy Flash then. Well, you're still wasting your money because you're using a Game Boy emulator with a cart emulator. You might as well, you know, take one 
layer out of that chain and get a much better experience with something like this. Um, but I don't know. That's that's me. That's my soapbox. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I hope that helps. I know this was a super long video. I was hoping to make it about 20 minutes. Uh, I have clearly overshot that by over an hour. Um, but it is what it is. I this is a complicated subject. I don't plan on making any more videos like this. Um, I'm sure I'll do onesies and twosies here and there as they come up because of who I am as a person. Uh, but the intent is to keep this information in the wiki that I've mentioned several times already because the text wiki is so much easier to update than a video series. Um, I have already said in this video several things that were wrong. Uh, I know at least one offhand, I'm sure there are other things, you know, I just misspoke or, or whatever, I got a date wrong. It is what it is. Um, verify my information, I guess. Uh, don't just take all of your information from one source. Um, but people, people ask, you know, what's the difference? Here's the difference. Here's my opinion. Hope this helps. Uh, more information in the description. Otherwise, uh, thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with me, and uh, I'll catch you all next time.